Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a really, really long time. But guys, I am back and I'm excited to start making some new videos. So this video is gonna be all about how to make your dream trip to Paris a reality in 2023. Guys, it's time for us to get back traveling. I even took a break from traveling, so let's talk about how you can make it happen. But before I begin, I have a special announcement. I finally finished my Paris travel guide. So this guide has everything you need for your trip to Paris from itineraries. I have three itineraries available, things to do, what to eat, um, what to do, solo traveling advice. What else do I have? <laughs> How to use the Metro, um, must do things, literally everything you need to make your trip a reality and what to do. And it doesn't matter if you're a solo traveler, if you're traveling with kids, if you're traveling with one other person, I've done all three and I put the, put all of that um, advice and information into this guide just for you and you can find that in the description below. Now let's get started in this video. So like I said guys, we're going to talk about the seven steps you need to plan your trip to Paris. Step number one is you have to first decide what type, what time of year you want to go to Paris, what season, winter, spring, summer, or fall. Now I know this might not seem like a big deal, but it totally matters because uh, certain times of year certain times of the year paris is very expensive and there's just a whole bunch of people there and then the weather too the weather is an issue so to keep it short to keep it simple during the summertime it's way more crowded it's way more expensive and then it's it's hot <laughs> i mean if that's not an issue for you cool but i don't like being really hot when i'm traveling okay so that's the summertime it's the most expensive and then the least expensive time is gonna be between fall, the fall and the winter. Now, I recommend that you go to Paris during the fall because it's less crowds, all aspects of the trip are way less, less expensive and the weather is cool. So you can be like um, strolling around Paris with like a, a nice light sweater, sweater and like a cup of coffee and just, you know, or sitting outside in a cafe because the weather is perfect. There's not a lot of crowds, so you can like chill and people watch. So guys, step number one is to decide what time of year you would like to go to Paris. That's your first step. And of course, this will depend on, you know, the time you have off from your job and just time off, just the time you have available. But please do keep those three things into consideration, the weather, the cost, and the crowds. Step number two is to decide how, how long you want to stay in Paris. Now, at the bare minimum, I think you should stay in Paris for at least three days. But of course, you can stay however long you want to stay. Last summer, my sister and my two nieces, we were in Paris for a whole month. And we trust me, we could have stayed longer. There's just so much to see and do. And then there's also just sometimes you just want to sit at a cafe for, the, for like a few hours and just relax. Or sometimes you just want to hang out and walk around the city. And basically, you want to have those days where you're pretty much doing nothing and then there's so many things to do my point is that you should give yourself enough enough time to see and do everything um in paris so at the bare minimum i think you should stay three days but i do recommend you stay in paris from seven to ten days it gives you enough time to see everything you want to see but it also gives you enough time to deal with like um with jet lag and just being tired adjusting to the new time adjusting to a new city like I have been traveling for years and years and years and I still, I always get lost. No matter where I go in the world, I get lost. And you just need time for that. And you need time for, you need downtown, like a downtime, like I was saying earlier. So just consider staying in Paris for seven to 10 days. The next step guys to make your trip a reality in 2023 is you need to get your finances together. You need to create a realistic trip budget. And I have, I have a video, I think I'll link it below on the cost of Paris. I have lots of videos on budgeting for a trip, but um, in, this, in this step, I'll quickly go over the 10 things you need to budget for when planning your trip to Paris. Okay, this step is the most important step when trip planning, 
um, because you have to have your money together. You have to have your finance, finances together because uh, two worst case scenarios, you run out of money when you're in Paris and you can't buy food uh, and basically you're s struggling in Paris uh, or two, you run out of money, you don't have enough money to do fun things like maybe you want to go up to the top of the Eiffel Tower that costs extra money or maybe you want to have a show, see a, um, a show and you don't have enough money. You just have enough money to the to do the bare minimum. It kind of sucks when you're traveling somewhere and you have just enough money um, to get by. I, I've traveled like that before and I don't regret it, especially when I was like much younger because that was the only way I could have traveled. But it does suck when you're in a new country and you want to do something, but you just don't have enough money because you got to pay for your meals, etc. So, sorry guys, I'm so long-winded. I haven't done a video in a long time. So please bear with me. But my point is, uh, create a realistic budget. Know exactly how much your trip to Paris will cost you. Now let's quickly go over those 10 aspects of the trip you need to budget for. The first thing you need to budget for and the most expensive aspect of your trip, maybe, is your flight. Now you can get an estimate of your flight by going to skyscanner.com or google.com slash flights and see how much uh, your, trip, your trip will cost you based on the season you're going, which you did in step one, and the amount of days you're going. I recommend you have a more flexible um, search and try to book your ticket, uh, be open to the exact dates you're booking your ticket, just so you can get a better deal. So the next thing you need to budget for is your accommodation. So one great thing about Paris is that no matter what your budget is, you can find a place to stay. It doesn't matter, no matter what your accommodation, like favorite type is, you can find something in your budget and the type of accommodation you want. So you need to find an estimate of your accommodation. So you can go to sites like um, Airbnb, hostelware.com if you like to stay at hostels, or hotelscombined.com. They have really great deals in hotels if you're into hotels. Use those, pick one of those sites, do a quick search and see and get an estimate of your accommodation, again, based on the time of year you're going and the dates and the length of time you will be at that accommodation. I'll link all of those in the description, by the way. The next thing you need to budget for is activities. What do you want to do in Paris? What kind of travel are you? Do you like um, packing your schedule with lots and lots of activities, paid activities, or are you like me and you kind of just like to explore the city take a long walk, sit in a cafe, and do a few different activities. See, my activity budget will be completely different than yours if you are a busybody and you wanna do a lot of things. So that's why this is very important. But after you have a handful of things that you want to do, go to the official websites and see the exact cost of those activities. Just add them all up and that will be your activities budget. The next thing you need to budget for is food, your meals in Paris. Now, I don't want to get into this too much. I made an entire video. I'll link it above and below. Um, that video is all about eating cheap in Paris. And even if you don't want to eat cheap in Paris, I recommend you watch it because I talk more, talk a lot about just eating in Paris in general and uh, I just give some tips in there on how to um, navigate restaurants in Paris. The best thing that I recommend that you do is think about what style of a diner you are. Do you like uh, those fancy like Michelin restaurants uh, or do you like the average like uh, every average restaurants or do you like small uh, super duper cheap hole in the wall mom and pop restaurants? What's your dining style? And you're going to create a budget based on that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this website called numbio.com, I love this website, to get an estimate of how much food in Paris costs. It has everything from the cost of a banana, to the cost of bread, to beer, to McDonald's, to a meal for two, to an expensive meal for two. It just has everything you need. So use that website just to give you an idea of how much you will spend on your meals in Paris. The next thing you need to budget for is how you're gonna get around the city. So I highly recommend you stick to the Metro, not only because it's super cheap, but it, but it's also an interesting experience because 
you really get to feel like what it what it's like living in a Paris. So it's a it's a really unique experience, and I highly recommend you just take the metro when in Paris. Again, it's super cheap. It's one ninety euros one way, and it's. You can get anywhere in the city on the metro but you can also if you're up for it you can rent a car you can rent a bicycle you can take ubers when i was in paris last summer with my sister and my nieces we did take ubers and they actually weren't too expensive they were around the same prices as any any major city in new york like it was around the same prices we, i was paying in like new york or nashville so don't worry about that the, the ubers aren't that expensive so just decide what your mode of transportation will be in paris and budget for that the next thing you need to budget for guys is travel insurance you need to prepare yourself in case something goes down and it doesn't have to be something as serious as you lose a leg it could be something so simple like you got an ear infection when i was in croatia last year my sister had an ear infection and she had to go to the doctor so it doesn't have to be something something severe but you would still benefit from travel insurance especially if there's something along the lines of lost luggage and delayed flight all that jazz i highly recommend that you use use world nomads travel insurance i've used them many many times and they have amazing ratings amazing amazing reviews so you can check that out or you can use the search engine insuremytrip.com to find um, a ton of different travel insurance policies that works for you. It's just more options. Um, I used them last year when we were traveling, when me and my sister, when we were traveling last year in Europe, we bought a travel insurance plan for like three months, I think what we did, yeah. And it was super cheap. And we found it on insuremytrip.com. We chose insuremytrip.com because they had like a cheaper family plan. But if you're a solo traveler, you can stick with um, World Nomads. But I'll, I'll link both of those websites down below and you can find whatever works for you. The next thing you need to budget for, most of you will not need to budget for this. If you're a US citizen or, or you're from Canada or from the UK or Australia, is a visa. A lot of you guys are from all over the world and you might just need a visa to enter Paris. I'll link that in the description below. I don't know how much that would cost for someone that needs a visa to enter Paris. So again, I'll link that in the description below so you can figure that out. The next thing you need to budget for is vaccines. To be 100% honest with you right now, I don't know what it is right now if you need the vaccine to enter France. I don't think so. But um, I'll link that in the description as well. Uh, I don't think you need it anymore to get into Europe, but, but check that out. And because this, these things change all the time and just budget for a vaccine if you need to take a vaccine. But again, I don't think you need to take a vaccine to enter Paris, but um, even if you did it, you can get it for free all over the country. Number nine, you need to budget for supplies. So every traveler is different um i made a whole entire video on what to pack for paris i'll link that above and below i highly recommend you you check out that video because i go into a lot of things that are actually things that you need and not just um, a waste of time travel accessories so please do check that out so know what type of travel you are and the needs and your needs and create a budget for that do you need to get more make sure you have contacts do you need a new luggage do you need walking shoes that's important proper walking shoes um hair supplies everything that you would need while in paris create a budget for how much all those things will cost you again check out that video on what to pack for paris the last thing you need to budget for when going to paris is an emergency fund you need to have some cash at hand in case you need to change accommodations that totally happens to happen to us when we are in Paris. Maybe I'll make a video about that, but we booked a really crappy Airbnb. Um, for It was actually supposed to be for a month and we canceled, <laughs> we canceled it the next day, but we needed to have some funds to book the new Airbnb while Airbnb was processing our return and Airbnb can be a pain in the butt when it comes to processing re returns. 
because we could not stay in that Airbnb. It was disgusting. So you need to have an emergency fund. I recommend, it depends on how long you're staying, but $1,000 will get you pretty far or $500 will get you pretty far as an emergency fund. And I say $500 because that's just enough money to change your accommodation. And just in case, God forbid, you lose your debit card or you're pickpocketed, these things happen, you have backup money in like some other bank account. And I recommend that you have your emergency fund in a different bank account that you're not using for your trip to Paris. Because that's happened to me before where I had money on one debit card. This happened to me in Japan. I had money on one debit card. And for some reason, this debit card was not working anymore. So I needed to like transfer money from that debit card. So this was like four or five years ago and it wasn't that easy to transfer money. This was in 2017. 2017 it wasn't that easy to, to transfer money from one bank to another but thank god my sister sent me money to a different debit card i had so i was uh, saved in japan so make sure you have an emergency fund all right guys so that was a long very long <laughs> part of this video but again it's super important make sure you create a realistic budget step number four to make your trip realistic in 2023 is to figure out how the heck you're going to pay for everything you just budgeted for. So say your budget came up to $1,500, $2,000, $2,000, dollars $3,000, whatever it is, how the heck are you going to pay for that? The first thing I do, well, now that I'm traveling a lot with my sister, the first thing we do is we create a budget, which, which we just did, and then we have a separate travel account and we decide every week or every two weeks, we're gonna put money in that account. And we both do that. We, I decide how much I'm gonna pay, she decides how much she's gonna pay because you know she has kids and our budget is gonna be different. And, we, and every single week we put money into that account. And I highly recommend that you do that. You have a separate account for your travels. So that's the first way to set yourself up for success. Next, how are you gonna get this extra money for this trip? Because this is pretty much an extra bill. Are you going to get work work extra hours? Are you gonna get an extra part-time job? Are you gonna open an Etsy shop? You have to decide how you're going to get extra money. After you figure out how you're gonna pay for the trip and you have a solid game plan, the next step is to actually go ahead and start booking everything. I recommend that you have a game plan first, steps one, two, three, four. You wanna have a solid plan in place. The first thing you can do is book your flights. Now that you have your exact flight date, then you can get your exact accommodation dates. And if you want to book some tours, you can do that too. And after you book everything, you need to sign up with the Smart Travel Enrollment Program, which is basically, to keep it simple, just letting the U.S. government know where you are in France in case something goes down and they need to find you. Okay, that's an absolutely free service. I'll link that in the description as well. Okay guys, and the very last step is to prepare for your trip to Paris. And I'm not only talking about packing everything up, I'm talking about other things like learning some French. Um, yes, I did make a video on how to travel Paris, travel Paris with little to no French, which I'll link above and below. But I do recommend you learn the very, very basics, like please, thank you, excuse me. Very, very basic because you're gonna have to know that. So be sure, there's so many free videos on YouTube um, with basic friends. So be, be sure to check that out in your preparation process. If you're a solo traveler, be sure to learn how to safely solo travel Paris. Um, I'm gonna make a video all about that. I'll link that above if it's already recorded. Make sure that you have your documents uh, together, your passport is up to date, you have six months left on your on your passport. Make sure that you have all your medication, enough medication. If you take medication while you're in Paris, make sure that you've called your bank to let them know that you will be out of the country. Make sure that you send your friends and family members your exact location, just so they can know where you are, safety first. Make sure you tied up any loose ends at home, someone coming over to water your plants and feed your dog, all that jazz. And all right guys, so that's it. You, If you do everything I told you in this video, 
you will have your trip to Paris planned and you'll be taking an amazing trip to Paris in 2023. I've taken many trips to Paris, again, solo, with kids, I've, I've done it. So I'm telling you, this is all it is. Even if you're nervous and you might feel overwhelmed, just rewatch this video, rewatch this video and just take your time and plan your trip. If you have any questions, anything, just type away in the comments below and I will be sure to answer it. If you have any topics you would like me to talk about when it comes to traveling Paris, again, leave it in the comments. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.